subscribe button. Bye! Welcome back everybody to Cruising Complete. In today's video, we are going to do a full review, kind of walkthrough review. We don't have a video walkthrough, but we're just going to do a full review of every area of the uh, Oasis of the Sea ship that we just went on in March of 2020. So it's the amplified version that we're going to give you the review on. Um, but before we get into the video, we just wanted to say thank you so much for those of you who have subscribed already, liked the videos, commented, and watched the videos in their entirety. It, it means a lot to us. We really appreciate it. And we are going, we did order a new video camera that we're going to be using for future videos. It's on the way with a new mic set up so it'll better the quality of our videos and help us build the channel even more. Um, we are growing really quickly. We're real close to that first mark that we want to hit that we're going to be doing our giveaways on too as well so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and if you have already thank you so so much we really appreciate it okay well we're going to get started we're going to go from deck to deck and just go over all the areas and review them um, based on our experience and, and our opinions of how it went while we were on board um, we're going to start with deck number 16 Deck 17 was all suites. We didn't stay in a suite. We didn't do anything on the suite deck or anything up there. So that was just, you know, the suite bar and the suite lounge, stuff like that. Um, so with deck 16, we had, uh, you had the Solarium bar on deck 16. I did go to the Solarium bar a couple of times, just walking through, stopped, got a drink. Uh, didn't spend a whole lot of time in there. It was a nice area, but it was also pretty hot a lot of the times in the solarium. So we just kind of would just walk through it. You know, if we were going to the bistro up there to get some lunch or something was about the only time that we actually used a solarium. It's more for adults and we had kids with us, so we really didn't spend a whole lot of time in there. Yeah, I know the teen club. We went through there a couple of times because we wanted to see what's there. and We were sort of old enough, so they let us go grab food and stuff and then go back to the teen club. So. Yeah, it was pretty much just like a walkthrough area for us. But a lot of people just laying out in lounge chairs and relaxing um, and sitting by the pools or whatever. They had a couple waterfall things go, you know, running through the hot tubs in the pools. It was pretty neat to see. Um, they also, on Deck 16, had uh, one of the lime and coconut bars. Um, during the daytime, it was pretty hot. Um, like I said we were in the Caribbean, obviously, so it was pretty hot. And there really wasn't a whole lot of shade up there, just a little ease over the bar. So during the daytime, wasn't really a pleasant place to sit unless you wanted to sit in, in the sun. Um, that nighttime was cool. It was a little bit breezy, but it was cool. And they had all the lights on at night. So it was really neat to see it at nighttime um, with everything lit up. Um, just go sit at one of the jacuzzis that were up there and relax or, uh, you know, do that by the bar and grab you a drink. Also on 16 was the Windjammer. We, we ate in the Windjammer quite a bit, mainly for... Uh, breakfast and lunches we kind of skipped around we did uh we didn't do specialty dining we did uh you know all the included options but we did skip around because they did have quite a few of the included options on board yeah. when jammer was mostly whenever we get on the boat we try it there first that's our go-to place so we can walk around the boat and stuff so. yeah i like it because it has like a variety of everything it has like dessert and main courses so yeah, and the Windjammer, they change their menu daily. Uh, you have a lot of the staples, the same types of food. You have hamburgers, hot dogs, whatnot, that they're going to have. Uh, certain areas are the same, but they also had a couple areas that they would do theme nightly or change nightly. They'd have an Italian night one night, a uh, the Mexican night one night, a uh, Asian night, you know, Asian-inspired Asian, Asian -inspired dishes. Uh, so they did change up certain meals every night so you weren't eating the same thing if you did prefer to eat the buffet um also on 16 they had uh was the ultimate abyss launching where you got on the slide and rode the slide down to the boardwalk um a couple of us did that i did it yeah. personally this cruise suggestions is to keep your elbows tucked in though because if you don't and you rub them on the sides it, it can burn yeah, it yeah it'll give you like a, a Kind of feels like a rug burn, kind of. So uh, that and the zip lining, I believe, was also on, on 16. The zip launch for the zip so lining. Um, one thing with the zip lining, make sure you don't wear flip-flops. You cannot do the zip lining wearing flip-flops because you're fall. zipping across the boardwalk and dropping a flip-flop on somebody that's cruising around a boardwalk. Probably ain't going to be too happy <laughs> with you. But, uh, yeah, you have to have on actual tennis shoes in order to do the zip lining. Um, the flow riders... They had two flow riders on 16, the surf simulators. 
One of them was majority uh, boogie boarding, uh, the lay down type of simulator, and the other one was for people who wanted to try the stand up surfing. Um, they have competitions. They and have stuff yeah too. different time frames throughout the day. They have different competitions. Sometimes it's busier than others. Uh, on this cruise, we didn't get off the boat at any of the ports. We stayed on the boat the entire seven days. It's um, preferred because if you stay on the boat while other people are off that port, you get more time to do some of the stuff. It's slower to do the activities on board. It's not as busy when they're in port. So we had already been to all of these ports on this particular cruise, so we just decided to stay on board and enjoy it while it was a little bit slower when everybody else was off the boat at port. And we did the things like the flow rider and the zip lining and stuff like that while it wasn't as busy in port. Um, so that's also a suggestion, too, especially if you're traveling with kids and you want to do it in a quieter time. Um so that was pretty much it on deck 16. Then uh, as you move down to deck 15 is where the actual solarium and the solarium bistro are. Like I said, we did eat in the bistro. We went there for breakfast in the bistro. And if we were walking through, we might grab a snack from the little buffet line they had set up in a bistro or something like that. But um, other than that, uh, pretty much the pool deck was deck 15. Um, you had... Three different pools. You had a, a beach pool, which was a saltwater pool, and then you had the main pool and uh, the, the, pool the sports pool that were freshwater and the Splashaway Bay area for the kids. And there were a couple different sections of Splashaway Bay. There was one for toddlers who were still in diapers, and then there was one, a giant area for toddlers who were out of diapers. And they had some slides in it too that you know, the toddlers can do, and Anaya really loved that. Uh, she was three at the time of the sailing, so she went into the bigger area, and uh, she definitely loved the, the Splash splash Away Bay is what they call it, the Splash Pad area for the kids. That's probably her favorite thing to do on the entire ship. Mm -hmm. So it's a good time for kids of all ages. Um, also on Deck 15, they had the arcade. Now, the arcade is extra. It's not included. But you do want to look through your cruise planner because sometimes throughout the course of a cruise, they will set up specific times. Normally for like 30 minutes or an hour, they do it through the kids club. And then they also have sections of time just on the cruise planner where you can go to the arcade and it's like a free play. You also, don't get charged. Also, look on your status. They um, post things about like if you have like a diamond status or a gold status, they'll give you like discounts on the arcade. I know last time I went... Me and my brother, we spent over maybe 60 bucks, and we got, like, half of it back because they did specialties. Yeah. yeah, they do discounts. They do, like, like you said, uh, depending on whether you're gold, platinum, emerald, you know, if you spend $50 in the arcade, they give you a $10 credit, stuff like that if you're platinum. And like you said, different levels and whatever your status is, you're going to get a different discount on stuff like that. Um, but also on, on deck 15, now we didn't do specialty dining, but they had port side barbecue on deck 15. That is the one that I wish I would have done because every time that we would walk by port side barbecue, just the no, smell. So good. And it was right on port smell. side, right like around the corner from where the team club was on deck 15. And Kaylee yeah. spent a lot of time in the team club. And so we were constantly walking by there and. It, you had port side barbecue on one side of the ship, and on the other side you had El Loco Fresh, which is the Mexican uh, restaurant on board. It is free, included in the cost of your cruise. So they had stuff like uh, quesadillas, quesadillas, and tacos, uh, and tacos. tacos. It was burritos. definitely one of my favorite places to go on the cruise ship. I loved El Loco by Fresh. far, especially since it was right outside of Team Club. You could yeah. go grab lunch, breakfast, and dinner over there. Yeah, it's, and like I said, burritos, tacos, and it was pretty much grab and go. You could special order and tell them you wanted to add things or take it off. They had a little section kind of like, uh, like almost set up like an omelet station would be where you tell them what ingredients yeah. you want. And it's, yeah. But they also had stuff that was just grab and go that was ready. You can just grab up and go up and get a, you know, cheese quesadilla or a burrito, you know. Another thing I really liked was like the um, salsa station they had in like the middle of a loco fresh. That was really cool because they had like twelve or thirteen different salsas. Salsa, guacamole, sour cream, the whole the whole shebang. So it was really it was really one of our uh, favorite places that we enjoyed eating while on the boat, and it was convenient because of the times they were open and it was really quick service as well. So we were able to not spend a whole lot of time there dining, and we were able to do a lot more activities. Um, so, Team Club Social Two Ninety Eight. Kaylee spent a lot of time in that. 
do definitely recommend you go on the first night. You register, go show up on the first night because that's when a lot of the teens make friends is on the first night. You get to know and you get to like settle in your different type of groups with kids. And on behalf of being in the teen club, it was an awesome experience. They did a lot of upgrading. They have huge TVs in there. They have video games, Nintendo. They have these lounge areas where you could sit. There's spinning chairs. There's big tablet tables in the middle of the floor where you just play like different games. And there's four spots on both. Pool so. tables, um, air, air hockey or air foosball. Hockey, I mean, they foosball. have all sorts. And all of the stuff that was there in the teen club was included. Um, so all those games they didn't have to pay extra for in the team club. Um, also up on, they had a lot of stuff on deck 15 up on the pool deck. You also had your, the Oasis Dunes, the mini golf, which is free. Um, we'd walk by and grab, a, you know, golf ball and just play Later a couple holes. Uh, we had to stay up there, the, you know, a whole long time because it was hot on the pool deck. But uh, we just stopped. Thing to do. Yeah, just stop and we'd play a couple holes of golf for a few minutes if we had it, you know, nothing planned or whatnot. Yeah. Um, the sports court was also up there, the basketball hoops. They had ping the pong. ping pong tables. They had Just soccer volleyball. stuff in the sports court, volleyball, yeah. um, pickleball, all sorts of different activities that they had going on on the, on the sports deck and the, uh, the pool deck. So. The water slides, the landing was on the pool deck, so you had to be up a little bit higher to get on it, but then it came down and landed on the pool deck, right by kind of like the splash pad areas. Um, deck 14 was pretty much the only thing on there besides staterooms was the Adventure Ocean, the Kids Club, um, and the nursery for the little babies. Uh, um, Royal Caribbean's got different age groups for their different uh, kids areas. I said the teen club on Oasis is totally different from the other ships because they just changed it when they did the amplification to where now the teen club is 13 to and, uh, 13 to 17 pretty much. Now you have all of your 6 to 12 year old groups are in the Adventure Ocean Club. And that's the first time uh, Royal Caribbean has done that and moved those age groups all into one big group. It used to be separated. But it is a enormous sized area for these kids. They have an area to play video games, um, yeah, Xbox, foosball. foosball. They have a big sports arena area where they play different games. Um, like every night I know I would stay for a little extra to play the Gaga Ball tournament because I love Gaga Ball. Yeah, like at the end of the night, it was free up until 10 o'clock at night. And after 10 o'clock, they charge like $7 an hour, roughly right around there. Um, and we go to pick yes. them up at 10 o'clock at night, and they'd be like, we want to stay longer, you know. And because they had so many activities they were doing that they just enjoyed doing. They made so many friends. Um, and I know I personally was staying in the arts and crafts area a lot. And they had a lot of different arts and crafts things to do. Well, and they had the science lab in there, too, where yeah. they did yeah. science experiments and stuff. They had so many different activities, like you said, the gaming tables, to where not everything... If your kid didn't like to do one thing, there's something else in there that they would enjoy doing. So definitely recommend you sign them up on the first day. Let Especially. them go that first night to make friends. And you... N these kids, the first time they went to the kids' club... They didn't want to do it at all. They're like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. Now and go now every time. cruise I take them on, <laughs> that's all they want to do is go to the kids club. Half the time, dad's left by himself, you know, going to do other stuff because I'm like, what do y'all want to do? And they're like, kids club. Another so. tip for the um, Adventure Ocean group is even though like the toddlers and stuff, they get out around like 10 o'clock at night. There is a little, like, play area down the hall where it's open, I think, almost all the time, like, 24-7. Yeah. And I know Anaya especially, she liked to go there at night when the kids' club wasn't open. Yeah, and it's a, they had slides. It was almost like an indoor playground type of place. Um, slides, just little netting things that they could climb around in and different activities. So she loved going in there and playing. Now, she was in the three- to five-year-old age group. The uh, I think they call it, was it the Royal... Something, toddlers or royal toss, something like that. They had their name for it. Yeah. Um, but that was for the three to five-year-olds. And then they had the, the nursery for the under three age group. Um, one thing with the under three and then the, pretty much the up until your five-year-old, those two different groups. When you drop them off, you sign them in, sign them out. The three to five-year-old age group is complimentary up until 10 p.m. It is free. 
the nursery does charge all the time and you have to set up time your first day on board. So if you have a young one that's under three, you definitely want to head there as soon as you can to sign them up because the time slots fill up pretty quickly depending on how busy your sailing is. But like with Anaya, when we would drop her off, they give you a phone that works on the ship. So if, if something happens while you're out doing a show or something and they need assistance or they're just crying, they want mom or dad or whatever the situation is, they give you an actual cell phone uh, that they can call you on the ship directly. So that was nice to have because you never know when you know something may happen and they need to get a hold of you and you're running around the ship. could be hard to find because it is a pretty big ship. So that was a neat little touch too they had for the little kids. But that's only for the up to five from the six and older that wasn't available. Um, let's go down. Now that was deck 14 was also the escape room. Um, now we've done escape room on previous cruises. I personally didn't on this one, but Kaylee and her mom did the escape room on this cruise. How was it? So the escape room, it was pretty cool. It was definitely harder than any other one I've been in before. It's It was like outer space NASA theme. So there was like the little control panels and stuff, which you had to figure out, find keys and lab coats and stuff. It was pretty cool. You'd have to definitely try it yourself. Now that is an extra charge. It was, I think, nineteen ninety nine dollars a person um, definitely to do it. Price. takes It's an hour, one hour activity. Um, well, you get an hour. It's not necessarily take an hour. Right, as you have an hour to complete the task or whatever. The whole activity is supposed to take up to an hour. But um, it, it is age restricted. I think you have, what is it, the age I on it? 14, 14 and old. older. Um, it could change per cruise too. I've seen some of them are 16 and older. So it should be in your cruise planner prior to your cruise. If you want to look that up, you can book it ahead of time as well. Um, but that, you know, some people enjoy the escape rooms or whatever. And that's an option as well. So... Deck 11 and 12. There was no deck 13. Most ships don't have a deck, deck 13. 13. Unlucky, but, uh, unlucky number for right. some reason. <laughs> I don't Just know one why. of those things. But deck 11 and 12 was mostly staterooms as well. The one thing that they did have towards the back of the ship was the card room and the loyalty ambassador desk. Mm -hmm. yes. It covered like both 11 and 12. Yeah. Not a really big area, but it was an area to where you went to the loyalty ambassador desk and they had like a couple little desks to sit down. And then the yeah. floor right below that was the card room is what they called it. But it had like board games and stuff in there and a couple of tables you could sit down and play cards. Mm -hmm. But the view, you looked out over the boardwalk yeah. area. So yeah. you could see the carousel. Cause the, it's like you can see everything from those two rooms. Like if you sit down, you can see like from that deck all the way below to level six. Yeah, and it was neat to see lit up at night too because the boardwalk yeah. lit up and you had all the lights from the Ultimate Abyss coming down. Oh, you had right. the it's Aqua Theater. Beautiful. The Aqua Theater, when they would do their show, it's hard to see. You can't really get a good view there of the actual show because... They have the uh, ultimate abyss, the slide coming down kind of blocks yeah. the view from sitting from the card yeah. room. But you, just to see everything lit up from there and, you know, you see the whole boardwalk lit just up. Just a kinda, nice sit down. Yeah, it was kind of a, a neat little quiet place to go to. Yeah, I mean, we didn't spend really much time there. For if you're trying to look, uh, like if you want to see if your kids would like to do the ultimate abyss so they can see how tall it is and yeah. if they would like it. Right. Um... Deck 10, nothing but staterooms, um, so obviously we didn't spend any time there. Mm -hmm. Deck 9, mostly staterooms. The only thing on Deck 9 that there was was Music Hall, yeah. which Music Hall covered two decks. It was Deck 9 and 8. It was a new venue that Royal Caribbean just introduced. Um, they do most of the line dancing there. Yeah, it's kind of like an extra dance. music place if you want to go sit there. They have line dancing there. They have, like... People that, yeah, just like, it's, like, it's kind they of like a mini club. Music music really. Right. Too. The top story was pretty much the bar, and they had like a pool table in there. You could play pool, and then the bottom floor was, they had some seating and a dance floor. And they had a lot, the live music in there. They had a lot of cover yeah. bands. Yeah. They did uh, um, every cruise. I mean, not every cruise, but they'll change up the cover bands. Sometimes they'll do Aerosmith. Sometimes, you know, depending on when you cruise, they'll have different cover bands that, that perform, and they perform at Music Hall as well. So that was a neat venue, being as it was new. We hadn't seen that on any of the other ships that we had been on. Um, so now down to Deck 8, obviously Music Hall moves down to Deck 8. Also on Deck 8 is Central Park. 
Mm -hmm. um, beautiful area. Real unique to Royal Caribbean's Oasis class because they have live plants. It's like literally walking yes. through a car. Garden or um, something. Birds. It birds, makes you little feel birds. like you're on land. It doesn't make you feel like you're on a cruise ship. Right. And yeah. uh, they have, you know, the trellis bar. I went down to the trellis bar and I would sit there just sometimes for an hour or two and just communicate with the bartender, have a drink, and just sit there and relax because it was so quiet and you could hear the birds chirping. It was a real unique place to go. But also in Central Park, they had a, a couple shopping places. Yeah, um, they had, they had places the library, too. Yeah, the, the library, library was in Central Park, so they had a place you can go in there and uh, read books. Yeah. Um, yeah. Some of the restaurants, a lot of the specialty restaurants were in Central Park. Uh Chops Grill, 150 Central Park, uh, Giovanni's Table, um, Park Cafe, Vintages. Yeah. We didn't uh, we didn't do any of the specialty dining. We didn't go into Vintages, which is the wine bar. I didn't I didn't go in there much. Um, was kind of neat. They have a giant wine bottle in Vintages, yeah, though. If you've never really seen cool. it, it was it's a humongous wine bottle underneath this table. So that was kind of nice, neat to see. Um, but all, we did eat at uh, the Central Park Cafe. Yes. yes. Um, that is free. It is included. It's pretty much a... Sandwiches and pasta and soup and Yeah, salad, salad, salad bar. Or, um, you walk up, you tell them what you want on their salad, and they make it. But their beef sandwiches that they oh, have. Oh, I love those. Those things are amazing. They, mm -hmm. they have like fresh like, cut beef. Yeah. Or, or was it beef cumawick or whatever? I don't know the yeah. exact term that it's called, but it's a fresh cut beef, and then they put the sauce over it. And it's kind of like on this like a sourdough type bun. Yeah. Um, those were very good. Um, and they had little desserts and those, like you said, wraps and sandwiches that you can come pick up and go. It's just like a, pretty much a small cafe, but very good. We every cruise that we've been on on an Oasis class ship, we always eat there. Um, just because we enjoy it. So, also on deck eight was the top part of the Rising Tide Bar. Um, if you haven't been on an Oasis class ship, the Rising Tide Bar is a moving bar that sits probably, I don't know, maybe 20 people could fit on it, but you would get on on either deck five or deck eight, and it would slowly move up and down in between the decks. So, what we would do is we'd go get on normally on like deck five. And then no, order a drink and sit there and drink a drink and ride it up and down one time until we finish our drink, you know, because it took a little while for it to move up and down. On Oasis, it has a fountain going underneath it with lights and stuff. It's real pretty. Um, so the Rising Tide Bar is pretty neat, too, just something to, to do, you know, to be on a mobile bar going up and down. Um, that's pretty much it for Deck 8 with Central Park and Staterooms. Um Deck seven. Deck seven had the rock climbing wall. Staterooms and rock climbing. Some of them like the rock climbing. Some of them don't. I was um, never good at it, so. I tried it once. I <laughs> fell. I wasn't very good at it. Me and Sierra were kind of like the rock stars of that. Yeah. I, I remember rock, when, whenever definitely... I let go one time, I almost went over the rail, and it scared me so bad because I kicked off. And I went to the left, and it was like that rail was there, so it scared me. So, so they have the people working there, and you're attached to the thing, and they grab, they got a hold of the thing, so you're not going to fall off or go anywhere. It's and, definitely but, very safe. secure and safe. And it's watch your times too; they'll have the times that is open in the cruise compass. Um, so Especially look for at that. Kids on teams, they have certain areas, but also just, just, just kids. Yeah, just sometimes teams. like the team club will take them at specific times that nobody else can go as well. Uh, but one thing with that is they do not um, allow you to wear swimwear while doing it. You can't have on swim shoes. You have, I believe it's tennis shoes, right? Yeah, yeah it's tennis socks, shoes for the, and... socks and tennis shoes. So make sure you, when you're packing, you pack socks to take on your cruise yeah. um, because you definitely will need that for the rock climbing. For rock climbing, you also have to sign a waiver. So. Yes, and the waivers, when you first get on the cruise that first day, when you sign your kids up for the team club... Go up to either the rock climbing wall. You'll see it listed in your cruise planner. It'll be the rock climbing wall or the, the flow, flow rider. rider or it doesn't really matter. Which any of the activities, through. pretty much. Yeah. Those, you, you sign that waiver, and they're going to give the kids a wristband to put on their wrist. Yeah. And that's going to cover their waiver for all the activities for the duration of the cruise, as long as they leave that on their wrist. Mm -hmm. They will have to have an adult with them, obviously, but that'll cover their waiver, so that way they, you don't have to sign a waiver at every activity you go to do. It's only the one time if you get that wristband put on. Um, now, deck six. There's a lot to do on deck six. Yes. Um, 
part of the deck six is the Vitality Fitness Center. We didn't spend a lot of time in there. I, I don't work out when I go on a cruise. I don't really <laughs> work out a whole lot anyway. But um, yeah, I, I don't spend a whole lot of time there on a cruise. So, but it is on deck six. Well, one area of like the spa and the fitness center that's a good note is if you have a large group going, we travel with a group of six. We normally do split it up three people in each cabin when we do have that many, mm -hmm. but you have one bathroom in each cabin, so sometimes taking a shower could be a challenge. Um, it takes you an hour and a half in the morning to get everybody a shower and get ready. Well, up by the spa and fitness center, they have locker rooms, a sauna, you know, or whatnot, but they also have showers, and the showers tend to be a little bit bigger than the ones you have in your stateroom. So they are free to use. You can just take your stuff down to the shower at the fitness center, get ready there, take get shower, dressed, back, take a shower, go back to the room while somebody else is taking a shower in the room. So it you know saves a little bit of time. So it seems like a hassle, but it's really not. It's actually time. Complete. And you don't like, very, and you don't necessarily need to bring your own soap and stuff. They provide you with soap. They do provide you with the soap and stuff, but it's yes. kind of a generic soap. I do recommend taking your own, but you don't have to. All of that, all of that is provided for you. Um, so also on deck six, my favorite bar that's on all the Royal Caribbean ships, the Schooner Bar. Oh, it's the it's decorated kind of like you know. Pirate ships. Yeah, the old, old ships, old pirate yeah. ships type, you know, the old wooden ships. Or uh, me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a fun place. They do a lot of trivia there. They do a lot of little challenges there, you know, uh, yeah. scattergories type stuff. It's kind of just a sit down, relax, have a drink type of a bar and, and do like little trivia games and stuff. But it's a fun place. It's my favorite bar on, on the ship. Um also on deck six, they had the picture shop, the place yeah. to do. Um, if you're interested in getting pictures while on a cruise, I know a few times we've done it before. It's definitely a good place to go. They're not as pricey for a cruise. It's actually very decent. Well, they, they are pretty. Packages. They are pretty expensive, but they do offer unlimited packages. But expect yeah. to pay twenty to thirty dollars if you just yeah. want to buy one picture. It is pretty expensive. If you want a lot of pictures. The picture package is definitely worth it. Um, it's normally like I'd say between 100 and 150 bucks, and you get unlimited pictures. So that's probably the better way to go if you wanted to do pictures. Um, also, on deck six, the shore excursions desk and the next cruise desk. Um, shore excursions highly recommend you book that before your cruise because sometimes it will book up, especially on the bigger cruise ships because they have so many people going. But yeah. you can do stuff on board as well. Um, so if you want, have any questions about shore excursions or you want to book one, you just go to the shore excursions desk. Next cruise, if you want to book another cruise while you're on board, sometimes they give you extra onboard credit if you book it while you're on board. That's always an option as well. And then, uh, let's see here. Down, also deck six on the other end of the boat was boardwalk. Boardwalk. Oh, boardwalk. Yes. It's definitely a recommended place. They have a carousel for like the little kids and stuff. They have a bunch of candy. What's the There's grill place? Uh, Playmakers. Play yeah, they yeah. have. It's like inside. They have like a little mini arcade in there, pool tables, and it's. Now with Playmakers, Playmakers they, is really big on Oasis. It's a. It's it takes a. Up, you, it takes up the whole yeah, side of yeah. the boardwalk, and one side is a little restaurant seating area, and they have a bar um, in it. Also, that bar has a lot of draft beer options. If, if you like beer, there's not a whole lot of places on cruise ships to get draft beer. It's kind of limited. Playmakers actually has quite a bit. They, I want to say they had about 15 selections of draft beer and different things from IPA to your normal Bud Light, you know, a little mix of everything. So you get a wide range of that as well. Um, you can use your drink package in there. You don't have to buy Playmakers food to go into the bar and order a drink. So you can go in there and just order a drink anytime without purchasing the food because the food is an upcharge. And like you said, there's a little gaming area that's inside Playmakers. Yeah, it's like a they have like Pac-Man. Pac they have pool tables, uh, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong games, Jamie. little tabletop shuffleboard. All of that is included. All of that is free. And also, um, whenever you first walk into the boardwalk, on the left side, there is a hot dog house, the boardwalk hot dog house, which basically has like 20 variety of sausages. And yes, they have all different kinds of hot dogs and sausages. It's a boardwalk dog house. 
Um, so you, they're open all throughout the day. Most of the time, you can just walk by and get you a hot dog. And they had a couple different sides there as well that they would yeah. serve. Yeah. They, you could, they had all the toppings, you know, the sauerkraut and whatnot and all that. Now, also in Playmakers, on the outside of Playmakers, there's some arcade Foosball games. Basketball tables. There was like a basketball game that I played a couple of times. Now, the basketball games and Use stuff are an upcharge. Yeah. Uh, you'll see a little spot on there to swipe your card, but they have the foosball tables and stuff outside, which are included as well. And uh, they're like right next to the carousel area. Yeah. And the carousel is free of charge. You can ride that as many times as you want. I probably rode it more than the kids did. Uh, yeah, because I know Anaya would always be like, can someone go on the carousel? Every time we would go to the boardwalk, we would have to ride that carousel. At least three or four times. And they, yeah. they did a bunch of activities on the boardwalk as well. They had little like parades. carnival games and parades and stuff that they would do on the boardwalk. We had popcorn and cake on the boardwalk. They were throwing a little and on party. And last night, they did like a digging away or like a... Sailing away party, yeah, yeah. And and brownies and cupcakes and, and all sorts of little goodies. Popcorn. Sometimes they have drinks out there, you know, complimentary drinks that they give away as well for different events. They would do face painting and balloon twisting for the kids. So the boardwalk was more of a, a kid friendly area. Also, um, Johnny was, Rockets. Johnny Rockets Ooh. also on the boardwalk. Good food, very good food. Yeah, we went um, milkshakes are a definite go if you want to go there. That's the best place to go. Yes, we did eat there for breakfast a couple of times. Breakfast is complimentary at Johnny yes, Rockets on Oasis. Um, lunch and dinner are an extra charge. It's a flat fee, though. All you can eat for a flat fee. Um, if you have a drink package, milkshakes at Johnny Rockets. They are not included in your drink package unless you go eat at Johnny Rockets and you pay that surcharge. Then they are included if you have the drink package. Um, we ate there for breakfast, however... And for breakfast, it's free. There's no surcharge. Order milkshake for breakfast. It was included. I didn't have to pay for it. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. I guess it depends who the server is. So, um. Also, just, the bottom of the abyss side is also on deck five. Yeah, the part where you come down and you get six, off the slide. Yeah. yeah, deck six. So, what we would do is we would come down. We'd go run up to the top deck real quick. Half and the family would be down. on the boardwalk already. We'd yeah. go down there and they'd ride the carousel. And we'll be like, okay, we're going to go up and ride the abyss. We'll meet you down on deck six. So that's, yeah. what, that's what we would do and meet them down there. Yeah, and I there's mean, also a couple little uh, little like trucks and boats or little yeah. Yeah, play area, play for, area for the kids that they can outside. climb on. It's got the steering wheel. They can act like they're driving the, the school mm -hmm. bus or whatever the little things were they had over there. Also um, in, on the boardwalk is the... Uh, the water show, the, the, aqua, uh, theater. the aqua theater, aqua theater, <laughs> must see that. show, the best, best show we've, we've ever, ever seen. seen on any cruise ship. Royal Caribbean is typically pretty high when it comes to entertainment, entertainment on a cruise ship. I mean, it's I haven't seen a particular cruise line that's had better entertainment overall. But this aqua theater show um, was it was it Aqua Eighties or yeah, was the yes. name of it. But it was amazing. I mean, there's people flying around like they're out of a trapeze school and a guy walking a high wire at the top deck of the ship and the, the dives that they do off pretty much the top deck down to deck six in this small little pool. Um, just amazing. The dancers, the performers, um, the best show by far that we've ever seen on a cruise Another ship. Another thing is right after you pass the hot dog station... Like right in front of it, there is also a candy shop. Sugar Beach. Sugar, Sugar Beach. Beach. Yeah, I know we I could go in there and y'all got a little bit of candy. Yeah, I think it I is an upcharge, but it's not that much of an upcharge. It's, it's, like, it's very. It's little. like ninety nine cent for an ounce or something like that. It, I mean, it's candy yeah. stores are expensive anyway, but it's typically. You can expect to spend the same amount that you would at any candy store. You go to a mall's candy store. It's pretty similar. I mean, it's not too overly crowded. And also, they had the ice cream shop in there where yes. they sold Ben & Jerry's ice cream, which was an upcharge as well. Now, up on the top decks, they had free ice cream. I think it was deck 15 or 16. They had where the, the soft, club was. Yeah, the right soft serve box. machines. You can get yeah. free ice cream up there. You Pretty much they were open most of the day, so you can just get free soft serve. Yeah. But they did have the Ben and Jerry's down at the Sugar Beach. And they also would do like cupcake decorating classes yes. in there for an upcharge, stuff like that. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, you could as well. I think that's pretty much it for deck six. Um, yeah. Behind the aqua theater, they do have shuffleboard back there, but 
Yeah, they were pretty much closed the whole time. They had it blocked off because people were doing uh, either the aqua theater show was going on, or the performers were practicing, or they had events going on yeah, in the aqua theater. Kind of so they had the shuffleboard area closed for most of the cruise. We weren't able to get yeah, back there. There's at also all. like a miniature um, shuffleboard and inside playmakers. playmakers. There's a tabletop it's shuffleboard like one. That you ones. Push. Yeah, it's a little bit different, but it's a shuffleboard game. Um, now, down on Deck 5, um, the other half of the Vitality Spa, I think Deck 5 was actual spa um, part of it. And then uh, the Royal part of the Royal Theater. The Royal Theater spanned, what, two or three decks? I think three decks on uh, yeah. two decks, maybe, on Oasis mm -hmm. that it spanned. Um, that's where they did, like, the, the cat show, the um, different venue, you know, Activities they would have in the Royal Theater, different shows, different you know musicians singing, and uh, they would do the port shopping show or whatever. We go to that sometimes just because they hand out like free T-shirts. They throw stuff out in the crowd, you know. Yeah. So the port shopping show they normally have in the theater. Um, sometimes they'll just play movies in there and have movies going, like three D movies or whatever. They'll play those in the theater as well. Um, and then also on deck five is the promenade. So, there's a ton of stuff on the promenade, a lot of bars, a lot of shops, um, it's guest definitely services. where most people are, so it's recommended to get there when everybody is, like, off at court or something. Yeah. But it's still a very big place for venues. It's a very busy place, very yeah. busy. Um, and That's I think that is because you have a lot of, uh, the bars and stuff on the promenade Little as well. shopping areas, and, um, that's also where the... Rising Tide Bar is like yeah, the, the other one of half, the entrances. Yeah, you either join on deck five on Promenade and it takes you up to Central Park or you and then go back on down. Central Park. It doesn't stop on every floor. It's just either deck eight or deck five that it'll stop on. Also, I know there's Sorrento's, which is one of my favorite places to eat or get a snack at. It's pizza, but it's like one of the best pizzas. Yeah, they there. like the pizza and they also have uh, little pasta dishes and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. You know, little side dishes that you could have, you know, olives oh. and... And another place is Cafe Promenade. Mm. It is included, and that's where you can get, like, snack-wise, just, like, cupcakes, cakes, and fruits and stuff. But the coffee and stuff is an upcharge unless you have the drink package. Yes, and Kaylee tends to get a lot of drinks there. She likes the coffee, a little specialty, what, mocha thing, yeah, frappuccino things. I don't know, we all got a coffee and me and Sierra didn't like it, so Kaylee ended up drinking those. Yeah, but yeah. they have that at Cafe Promenade. That's... The drinks are extra, the cough, specialty coffees. They have regular coffee that's included for free, but the specialty coffees and stuff is all an upcharge that they have there. Like um, but all your little sandwiches, and in the mornings they'll have danishes and donuts and stuff like that there that you can, that is all included in the price. Also, um, Deck 5 is the Bionic Bar. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, that's pretty neat because it's a robotic bar. Um, your drink package works there, or you can just buy your drink there. But you go in and they have these little iPads and you type in what you want. They have all your classic drinks or you can specifically tell them what you want in your drink. And then your name will pop up on a screen and tell you what order you're in. And then you'll see this bar come up, this little arm, and he'll start making your drink for you. And it's pretty neat. And then it'll ding when it's done and it'll release your drink. And then your name will appear above your drink and say, come pick up your if drink. If you are wanting to do that, you might want to get there early. Because every time that we tried to go there, it was always packed. It's like, basically like an attraction. It's something yeah. that everybody wants to see because it's so incredible. It's so unique. Everybody wants to do it. But later at night, it seemed to slow down a little bit when a lot of oh, the people yeah. were in the clubs or, you know, in the other bars or venues. So... Definitely during the daytime, though, when especially on sea days when everybody's on the boat, it was very busy. Um, guest services is also on deck five. Yeah. Um, anytime you had to go there for car any type of issues, yeah, if one of the cards key. didn't work or yeah, you want to get like they also outside of guest services, like right on the wall, they have daily planners. Whether yes. it's the kids club planner, it's the teen club planner, or it's, or it's just, just a regular daily, daily planner, planner with. A whole list of daily activities and all the times for them. And it's definitely recommended to get those so you can, you know, plan ahead of time. We use highlighters with different colors to, like, so we can see what the family wants like, to do together yeah, or what like, we want to do separately. So it's definitely recommended to get a planner. And also they had uh, some of the bars they had besides the Bionet Bar. Uh, the Globe and Atlas Pub. It's kind of um, like an English-style pub. Um, I go in there quite a bit. Um 
couple beer selections on tap, but pretty much it's like your English style pub. You can get any drink in there, however. And they had music playing in there at night, guy uh, playing solo guitar and singing and j just different entertainment options in there. But that was a neat little place to sit and people watching the promenade as well. And Boleros, Boleros yes. is also Deck 5, the... Uh, it's more of a Hispanic... The Latin, uh, Latin, Latin dance yes. club, yeah. And they did a lot of the, like, Latin dance lessons and Music stuff were in there. They had salsa lessons in there, um, had a little bar and a big seating area. Um, so, Boleros is a fun place, you know, it's it always seemed to be a happening place every time you go by, it always... You'd have live music playing, people Everybody's dancing. Under dancing. Yeah, every, everybody was having a good time at Boleros. It was definitely a fun place, uh, fun place to be. Also, Deck Five well, on the outside of Deck Five. If you walked outside the running track, you would see people running. Um, Another good thing to get exercise in, or if you just want to walk and you want to see the ocean from there, it's also very quiet and yeah. not so busy. Place. And then on the back, very back of deck five, they had some chairs set up yeah, where so you could just sit watch there with the a drink and away. watch, you know, watch yeah. the waves on the back of the boat or watch yourself leaving port. That was neat. Um, one of the new venues they had on Oasis of the Class, the very first ship to get this venue, Spotlight Karaoke. Yes. Um, used to be called On Air, but now it's Spotlight Karaoke, and it's more designated as karaoke. They have a couple private rooms that you can pay to use. But yeah, yeah. About that is, it, they have certain rooms yeah, based on your status that you can go into, and like you pay extra. That's like if you're kind of embarrassed, but you want to do karaoke, and you, it's like more of a family thing. But they do have the regular stage out there which is no upcharge or anything that you can go you can sign up for karaoke and you can do your song and there's a lot of people that show up for that yeah it was a busy place they were always doing karaoke they had different themed karaoke's they do 90's karaoke 80's karaoke just, just different teen themes karaoke. yeah or just broad wide range karaoke they always had different uh different options for people that want to do yeah. karaoke. They also did, during the daytime, they did a couple other activities in there. They would do scrapbooking classes and stuff. Mini some of the trivia stuff, sometimes. Yeah, some of the stuff you had to pay for, some of it you didn't. So you just need to look at your cruise planner and see what options are included and which options aren't. Um, and then you can decide what you want to do from there. Um, deck 4. Deck 4 had quite a bit on it as well. Um, part of the Royal Theater on Deck 4. Um... Part of the dining room, the dining room spanned a couple of different floors as well. We did the main dining most of the time in the evening. Um, the food was very good in the main dining room. The service was very good in the main dining room as always. So that's typically why we do the main dining. We just, we enjoy it. We've never seen a need to do the upcharge specialty restaurants. In the future, we may try them though because we may walk by places like Portside Barbecue and just love the smell yeah. of it and decide to do it. Um, also on deck four was the uh, casino. I spent a lot of time in there. Obviously, if you watch my other videos, you know that obviously that I enjoy the casino. Yeah. But also on deck four, outside the casino, walking around the one side, they have the art gallery where they sell all the art and they have it on the walls and the displays all around the ship. Um, you can sign up and go to one of the art auctions. Sometimes they give away raffles for free, five hundred dollar art. What you know, whatever. Every cruise is different, but. They do different art auctions where they give some away, and they have free champagne, stuff like that. So the art also is on deck four. It's called, I can't remember the name of it, though. Is it? Uh, I don't know a specific name. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, it's just I don't, an art studio. Yeah, I don't remember the exact name of the art studio they have, but the art gallery on four. Um, also, on the under other end of the casino, if you walk through the casino past the art gallery, is... The uh, skating rink and the yes. Studio B. Studio B. Studio B, the ice skating rink. And they do the ice skating show, was probably the second best show behind mm -hmm. the Aqua Theater. Yeah. That was a very good show as well. They're throwing people up in the air and just spinning around with this lady on his head. And he's, it was so it was, uh, it's crazy. Very entertaining. And, yeah, very entertaining. Well. Very good ice skaters. Do it. Um, and it's definitely recommended, like we said before, about the waivers. The waivers also cover ice skating and, and also cause laser, laser tag. Yes, and they you are allowed to ice skate on the on board. They'll have open times where you can go and they have skates for you. You don't have to take your own. But and you must pack pants. Pants, pants, you have pants to long pants. pants is required. No so. ripped jeans, no ripped nothing. It has to be fully covering your legs for safety precautions. We didn't know that the first time we went on the Oasis and Cole didn't pack pants, so 
He had to wear his sister's pants, so just to go ice skating. <laughs> so definitely go on your cruise planner ahead of time. Do your research, get information ahead of time, and watch videos like this, and they'll give you information you need. To, that way you don't forget stuff like that. You can do all of the activities, because I'm sure trying to buy a pair of pants on board the ship is going to be pretty costly. So um, definitely do stuff like that ahead of time. Yeah. Uh, and right behind the ice skating rink, they have what they call the entertainment place. You have the... The Jazz on Four, which was a, like a jazz club where they play music. The Diamond Club is now on uh, deck four. If you're a Diamond member or above, you can go in there and they have different, you know, foods, you know, that little like hand foods pretty much yeah. or there are stuff Snacks. like that. Snacks. Snacks. Yeah. Um, and complimentary drinks and whatnot in the Diamond Club. If you're a Diamond member or above, you can definitely take advantage of that. And then also right right across from that they have was it Blaze? Yes. Blaze yes. and they had a Blaze nightclub and they had the comedy club is also now inside of Blaze. It's all Blaze one. is definitely a very cool place. I remember for the teen club we went there for a, it was like a night silent party they call it where you get these headphones with the different channels and stuff and yeah. it's like a really cool place. It's definitely another area to go check the out. The silent parties are fun because like she said, you get headphones and they give people two different headphones that have different channels and you're not talking, you're, but everybody's dancing. It's like a disco party and they're dancing to the music on their channel. It's like blue or well, green. And some people are dancing to different types of music so it gets kind of funny depending on what kind of music you have playing. You're dancing totally yeah. different than somebody <laughs> else has playing in theirs. So yeah. um, that was definitely a, a fun thing to sit back and just watch people do. And they also do the live comedies. The comedians on board are always hilarious. So that was a pretty neat little venue as well. I think that's pretty much it on, on deck four staterooms as well. Just a quick though in here, we forgot to mention about the x-ray vision. The X-ray Vision was a place up by the Captain's Bridge area. It's a place, like, it's just a big wall with, like, pictures on it. And on the Royal Caribbean app on your phone, you go and there's, like, a little eye logo. And you tap on it and it's a camera. You hold your camera up to the eye that's on one of the pictures. And it goes through, like, a whole bunch of layers of the walls. And you can see, like, Captain area, like, a kind of secret bedroom area. It's a pretty cool place to check out. Deck three was, uh, you had one of the dining room floors on deck three, yeah. and then uh, the conference center. Oh, um, yeah. If you're on board for a conference or something, there's a couple conference center rooms on deck three. But that that's about it. I think we pretty much covered rooms, everything. Yeah, yeah, state rooms. Most of the um, rest is just state rooms and just yeah, yeah, yeah other rooms. small areas. And I think there. deck two had the, the medical clinic if you had... Um, medical issues yeah, or anything like that you need to go see a doctor or whatnot was down on deck two that's but just pretty much it i mean yeah. i think that covers the entire boat um we tried to give a review of what just our opinions are and we like and just give everybody a little bit of information about how everything was on board um if you have any questions or comments regarding to one of the areas on the boat or comment you, down yeah, yeah comment, comment down, down below, below. um We'll answer any questions anybody has. We're here to help you. We are not travel agents. We're not here to sell anybody travel or to make money off of you. We just love cruising and we want to share what we have learned over the years from cruising and with share with you. Because I know us, too. we learn a lot. Every time we go on a cruise, we find out something new. Yeah. And we always research. We always watch videos and do, you know, read through all Royal Caribbean's cruise Definitely plan or whatnot. Definitely recommended. Um, there's an app that we use specifically and it's the Royal Caribbean app. If you download it and you log in and it shows you your like your next cruise that you have and they have the deck yeah. plans on there, they have the schedules and stuff and it's like it's really and you can use it without internet. So it's very recommended. Yeah, and for Royal Caribbean, a lot of your cruise ships have their apps. Carnival has their own app. Um, depending on what cruise ship you go on, um, when we've been on numerous different cruise lines, we're actually going to do a video coming up. Pretty soon and go into detail what cruise lines each one of us has been on, which cruise ships we have been kind on like and whatnot. Yeah, a little bit more of a get to know each one of us uh, personally. Um, but we'll, we'll do that in the future. But definitely want to download the app and do your research. And it'll give you a lot 
of, of insight on what's going to go on on your particular and ship. And it also has a David planner on there. So, like, before you even get on the boat, you can look at what the David planner is. Sometimes it'll change. But like it's like going to change for We still cruise. like to get the paper one. Like it yeah, says, yeah, it's recommended. Highlight. Yeah, it's recommended to get a planner. It's recommended to research the deck plans and stuff. So, when you're getting on the ship, you kind of have an idea of where everything is, and you're not scrambling to get somewhere. Yeah, well, and you can use the app on this on the ship. Too. Yeah, the apps are free to use. Thing. You do not have to have the internet mm-hmm. package to use their particular app. Nope. Um, and on some of the ships, you can actually communicate with each other using that app. It's on very few yeah. of the ships so far, but a couple of them do have it. Um, but with that being said. Thank you guys so much for watching the complete video. Um, hit the subscribe like. button, thumbs, thumbs up. up. Um, throw us a comment down there. Any questions, anything we can do better, anything we can do to help you. Just let um, us know. Let us know. We're, we're, we're here. We want to make this channel a success. We want to help other people. So thank everybody so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. Subscribe or I will get you. <laughs>